The Cawthron Institute's Glenhaven Aquaculture Park is situated close to Nelson. It has a history of collaboration with commercial entities involved in green shell mussel production and a comprehensive research programme. The latest phase of a long involvement with this species is aimed at identifying and breeding from the most stress tolerant and efficient mussel families. They are also selecting for more desirable traits in colour, taste, texture and size. Back mid 90s the mussel industry was growing quickly but what we had was very little idea of the baseline biology and rather importantly we didn't know how to get these guys to reproduce in captivity. The industry was based entirely on spat captured from the wild and all the uncertainties that come with that. So Cawthron's priority at that point was to close the breeding cycle, learn how to bring parents into captivity, learn how to create babies, larvae, and from those larvae settle them into spat that could then be used in the traditional culture industry. On the back of that comes selective breeding. So almost all of the animals and plants that we'll look at in this program, for example, will have come from selective breeding probably over hundreds of years. Green shell mussel had absolutely nothing, so we've got this unlimited potential, natural variability to tap into. The last thing we'd ever want is to create a, a battery chicken. These guys are growing in the natural environment, they've got to be robust, and increasingly we're looking for animals that are efficient as well. There's a limited amount of food in the natural waters. We don't want to deplete that, we want to find animals that use that effectively. We're in the Cawthron nursery here. This is our holding pattern. Basically any animals that we need to just keep held in the background, either adult females and males that we're getting ready for breeding, or young juveniles that are getting ready for scientific experiments. This is a facility, rather than using the intensively grown, rather expensive algae grown in the culture room here, we've got outdoor ponds that are growing algae very, very cheaply. And this is the facility that allows us to feed those shellfish. Over the years, shellfish growers, commercial growers have come in to start working in this facility taking up those techniques for themselves. Now we have local company Corno Seafood and also Spat NZ established specifically to commercialize the selective breeding of green shell mussels. And so this building will be that intimate interaction between the researchers and those companies putting this work into practice. This is a stress physiology lab. We're, we're looking at things that upset animals. And one of the most familiar parameters for us, if you go to the doctor's surgery, you say you've oh, got some sort of physical problem, very likely you'll have some ECG leads connected and your heart activity and heart rate will be monitored. For the same reasons we'd do this with the muscle. In our case, we'll be controlling the environment, recreating often stresses that the animals will see during their normal life out in the sea or during harvest. If these guys are going to be sold to a live market, either overseas or a live supermarket fishmonger in New Zealand, we need to now start to look for characteristics that identify really tough, robust animals that can tolerate those processes. Part of our mining into the mechanisms that underlie growth we need to understand how efficiently animals are using the food energy that they eat. With some complicated plumbing and an oxygen sensor, we're measuring how much oxygen they're consuming in a continuous flow system. And with a simple conversion, we then translate oxygen consumption into energy units, and that will tell us the basic maintenance cost of these animals. This is typical of the genetic variability that we could expect where we'll have a fundamentally slower growing animal versus something that's now almost ready for harvest versus something that's obviously going to take quite a while before it can get to the supermarket. Sometimes we'll find an offspring generation that gives us an unexpectedly good characteristic that we never planned for. We're learning all the time. 
If that happens and we get characteristics that are very unusual but highly desirable, we want to be able to capture that and continue to use it in the future. So exactly the same as you might use a, a stud thoroughbred or a stud bull and keep their genetic material on ice until you need it again. Um, we will create stud lines of, of mussels and oysters that we can use in the future. So it's creating a genetic database that we can use for mass production in the future. The relevance of this part is growing enormously. The capability and the capacity that we have now here really makes it relevant. It really enables it to play a role in building the export industries from 400 million to a billion by 2025. And the mussel program is a, a really good example. It's here that they learn to, to breed the mussels in the first place and get the scientists in who, who understand breeding and selective breeding and the whole process, get the industry alongside, SPAT NZ, Rodney Roberts, Ted Cully, Samfords, working hand in hand with our scientists and, and the board and the boards of these industries and the CEOs understanding their strategic aspirations. So you have it sort of zipped up from the researchers to the practitioners, the managers, and, and really enabling us to take muscle, muscle growth forward. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air. 